at the 157 field guide today. Okay, wait, he'll, he'll fill me in there. Okay. So you want him to tell about the picture now or? Yeah, yeah. Or about yeah. the battalion? Okay, so this is the battalion. Tell him about your picture, maybe. It's a battalion. I don't know exactly where I'm at. It is somewhere. And how, how many did you lose out of it? Did any of it die? We didn't lose any. But here, this way we lost one man over there. At the, when the war was winding down, he was in, he was almost into Austria. And there was a big crowd of tanks, artillery, infantry. Infantry was riding on top of the tanks because the Germans were running. And he went 20, 30 miles a day. And the tanks in there in the little town, like a small town, a couple hundred people. The white flag one hanging out of the window. They put a white phosphor shell into the house and machine gun and everybody come out. I mean from that size. And the old white flags come out. Look like a snowstorm. But uh, that was when you were going into the, the villages after they yeah. the war was over. See the tanks had run through the ran through there and we was, we was assigned to, there was a 10th Armored uh, Battalion of the 10th Armored Division. And they uh, had the people, and they were riding our, inf our infantry, 324th Infantry was riding on the tanks. And we was going along to shoot up the, what they couldn't handle. The hell, we couldn't even find them half the time. Yeah. But we lost that one guy, we pulled up the, the stole town and had trouble getting traffic to. So it was all backed up. We was, Went over to the little field there, and two of my buddies, they went up and they just run out all around the woods. And then the one guy could speak German, and uh, <clears throat> as he's walking along, he'd seen three SS men, black uniforms. And the guy told him to, <clears throat> told him to hands up, lay down on the ground, and throw the pistols out because they wanted the pistols. But that all worked very well. And about that time, three other as says men behind to start to shoot. He shot in the, the buddy in the head and the one buddy that got through it, he shot it through his ear. He got away, he ran away. But I ended up that day, I didn't land in a ditch with a good old bazooka. That we didn't know why they attacking them, but there was just people running through them fields and, and uh, You'd, be, you'd see people laying out in the field like that, and they'd see 15 dead bodies laying out there, you know. So that's why somebody moves and wouldn't. That's a hell of a thing. You said there were people along the roads as you left where there, the Germans still had the rifles, some of them? We moved so fast that the, when the Germans surrender, the tanks would say, to the rear, go to the rear. There's the Germans frightened. Walking along with everybody else and had new rifles on their shoulder, ammunition. And that time they disarmed them. So then, but you did find some places that had wine left. Yeah, we found it. Champagne, tell, tell the stories. We found the wine. Go ahead. And the one place, <coughs> one place. <coughs> They uh, didn't need us for a day or so, so they put us in a house. They just tell people to get out and we use the rest of the study, put the pup tents in. And, uh, this is a house that had about a big wine barrel. So the whole couple hundred bottles, a couple hundred bottles of wine. That was pretty good to be drinking out of that. And next morning we went to get our wine and it was gone. So uh, the man that owned it was kind of forced to put the wine back. It came back. <laughs> A lot of things like that happened. Do you think you could read that uh, entry you had? Pardon? Okay. I feel pardon. How much? Yeah, I can pardon. Okay, well, that's, that's fine. So, do you want me to read it? And then maybe you could just uh, pull out some of what. Yeah. Can you edit it then after maybe? Um, possibly, yeah. Yeah, you can tell. 
Um, Who is it? Let's see. You had on Thanksgiving the Germans dropped several round on these lots. Do you want me to read that or do you want me to? Yeah. Okay, you want me to start maybe? Yeah, that works. Okay. On Thanksgiving, okay, let me start. Let me start over there. Let me tell you what they were. So this is just his like in journal entry. Yes, these are his journals. This, this will is, this will work. Yeah, this is yeah. This is what he told. Yeah, he dictated this to my husband. Okay. And we have it on our website as in there. So th these were his. This is his yeah. story. Okay, I'll read from some of the excerpts from George Sims' uh, story from the war. Um, on November 11th, the Germans dropped about 146-inch shells on our four gun positions. Our battery was lucky; only one guy had a scratch in the back of his hand. There were several shells that were duds and did not explode. One man was killed in an anti-craft battery that was connected to us. We had one man on a single mount, Philip D. caliber machine gun near the guy that got killed. He was scared and came running to our gun. When he got near us, a German shell was whistling in and we all shouted, hit the ditch, Lysisko. He did and went into about two foot of mud. Although we were all scared, mm -hmm. we had a good laugh over this. Another shell hit about 50 yards away and threw a chunk of mud in the air. It was about the size of two fists. It lit on Bratton's helmet. We were sure he had been hit. Another laugh. Another, on another gun, Loudermilk was lying in his pup tip, writing a letter with a candle ahead of him. Everyone was calling for him to get into a hole. A piece of shrapnel came through the side of the tent, and he was quick, quick into his hole. Two other guys had dug a hole and put a pup tin over it. They were in the tent when a shell came down on the side of the hole, digging a six-inch groove. It was a dud and did not explode. They did not think it was funny. During the shelling, my gun crew was in a trench between the front of our gun and the parapet, parapet wall. Our gun was in a pit dug on the side of a hill. The entry to this gun pit was in the right, was in the right side rear. A German shell exploded about 20 yards behind us just as I leaned back. A chunk of shrapnel crossed in front of my face and embedded about eight inches into the dirt wall. This piece of shrapnel was about the size of my thumb. The man in front of me in this trench was crying for the 20 minutes the shelling lasted. The reason the Germans knew our position was this. Our kitchen truck, can you tell why they, how they knew your position? We already had a kitchen truck with us. Yeah, behind the, you want to tell right. them that one? Let me read it. Go ahead. Okay. Our kitchen, the, the reason the Germans knew our position was this. Our kitchen truck was behind us over a hill in the valley. After we ate our meals there, we would wash our aluminum mess kit lids, knife, forks, and spoons, and then swing them beside us as we turned to our gun positions. The German observers could see us as we crossed over the hill. On Thanksgiving, the Germans dropped several rounds on us. Early morning, we were shooting towards the front lines, and about 10, 10 a.m., we got orders to shoot to the rear. The Germans had got into our rear area. All this shooting and shifting around resulted in no turkey that day, but we got it later. The mud was above our knees in this position. Before dark, the German in the rear were killed or captured, and we had to turn our guns around again. Really, the mud was the worst thing to cope with. We crossed at the Saar River at Wittring, France, during the night. We put our gun in position by digging pits to put our recoil spades in. About that time, the Germans had started a strong attack against our 7th Army. This attack was made to draw people from the Ardennes, where the big German push came the next day. Before daylight, we were ordered to back across the Saar. We went into position on the northwest side of the village of Whitrig, France. It was dark when we started to dig a hole to put our gun in, 20 foot wide and 6 foot deep. <coughs> it was Christmas Eve and snowing so hard you could only see about 30 feet away. They were, there were 18 of us digging. By daylight, we were dug in and covered over with a camouflage net. We did not see Santa Claus that night. We stayed here until February 15th. The Germans shelled the area several times, but we never got any shells in our position. We pitched a pyramidal tent about 40 yards away from our gun. We dug out individual foxholes against the outside of the wall. When we heard a shell coming in, you raised the edge of the tent and rolled into your foxhole. We scouted around and found boards to get our beds off the ground. A layer of straw over the boards made it a little softer. There was abandoned material left by retreating okay. German troops we had used for. That's good. That's, okay. So, yeah. okay. that's, that's excellent, guys.